Hi, I'm Kevin Lennon, NSA Vice President for Division I Governance. I'd like to welcome you to this Council June 2016 video. Today we'll cover the following. We'll recap the April meetings of the NSA Division I Board of Directors and Board of Governors. You'll receive a legal update from Scott Beerby and we'll highlight the upcoming NSA Council meeting. Let's start with the Division I Board of Directors April meeting. The board continues to serve its role as the strategic and oversight body for Division I. Particular emphasis in this meeting was on the value-based revenue distribution working group's report. You may recall that this working group stemmed from the presidential retreat conducted last August. The working group's charge was to consider their current revenue distribution formula and determine whether additional values, and in particular, academic achievement, could be incorporated into the revenue distribution model. It is very clear that the revenue distribution model as currently constructed does have values, in particular, number of sports sponsored, number of scholarships offered, but the charge of the group was to consider whether additional academic achievement values could be embedded in the distribution formula. The work of the value-based distribution group has been circulated to the membership for comment. You should all have copies of their survey, and we're asking that those be returned by July 1st so that the Board of Directors can consider your feedback and the recommendations of the value-based working group during its August board meeting. The Division I Board also received a report from its Sport Organizational Structure Working Group. This working group was also formed following the August Presidential Retreat. The Sport Organizational Structure Working Group has reaffirmed a number of critical principles related to the collegiate model, but are also seeking membership feedback in four particular areas, and their survey instrument and request for response will be circulated in the coming weeks. In particular, they're looking for feedback from the Division I membership on the current sports sponsorship requirements, on whether additional benefits should be provided to elite student athletes. Third, whether additional academic incentives should be provided to institutions who achieve at a very high academic rate. And fourth, whether the current FBS football requirements are appropriate. So please be on the lookout for this instrument. We are interested in your feedback. And in this case, you have more time to respond. The group is looking for reactions by late September or early October of this year. The Division I Board of Directors, along with the President's Councils in Divisions Two and Three, heard an update from the communications staff on the latest initiative, Pathway to Opportunity, focusing on the three pillars, academics, fairness, and student-athlete well-being. As a part of the presentation, it was noted that there is an outreach to member institutions to identify stories involving our student-athletes that highlight these three pillars. If you have these stories, and I know that you do, I encourage you to reach out to our communication staff to provide them with the names and those stories of those student athletes who you work with. The board was extremely pleased with the report and looks forward to continuing to hearing these updates from the communication staff. Subsequent to the council meeting, the board of directors received additional information regarding the impact of Proposal 2015-59. This additional information was deemed critical to the Board of Directors. And so in this instance, using its limited authority related to legislation, the Board agreed that a rescission of the recently adopted proposal was most appropriate and that they then asked the Council to continue to examine and improve the environment in the sport of football for all prospective student athletes. The board was very specific in outlining the components of this comprehensive review that it would like to see conducted 
to better help our student athletes and our member institutions. The board's decision to rescind 2015-59 should in no way be interpreted as a lack of confidence in the council. Rather, the board, when presented with new information that was not available to the council, believed that the best course of action was to rescind the rule and ask the council, as the appropriate body, to conduct the comprehensive review of the football recruiting environment so as to best serve our student athletes, our prospective student athletes, and our member institutions. The council has already established its own ad hoc working group to support the Football Oversight Committee to conduct this comprehensive review of the football recruiting environment and to provide a report back to the Board of Directors. I know that the council welcomes the opportunity to conduct this comprehensive review and has already taken steps to identify a committee to help with this effort to support the Football Oversight Committee. This group will provide its report to the council and in turn the Division I Board of Directors. The Division I Board of Directors also discussed a number of concepts that were generated from the Board of Governors. In particular, I would highlight the following. First, relates to the composition of the Board of Governors. As some of you may know, an ad hoc committee has been at work to examine potential changes to the composition of the Board of Governors. The Board of Directors discussed some of these concepts during its April 11th teleconference and again during its in-person meeting. There is some sense among the Board of Directors that given all of the changes going on in the Division I landscape, the fact that our new structure is in its relative infancy, and a desire to continue to focus time and attention this year on time demands in particular, that it may not be appropriate at this time to advance any changes to the composition of the governors. However, the Board of Directors agreed that it will continue to discuss concepts and potential changes to the composition and will pick this topic back up at its August meeting. So stay tuned. The Division I Board of Directors also heard a report from the Board of Governors specifically related to the pledge and commitment to diversity and equity in intercollegiate athletics. The Division I Board reviewed a draft pledge that is currently being circulated to our membership for comment and feedback. I encourage you to do so. The Board of Governors and the Board of Directors will discuss this at their August meeting. The commitment here is that our member institutions pledge to do all they can to improve the diversity and equity hiring among coaches and administrators throughout the association, Divisions 1, 2, and 3. If you've not done so, I encourage you to look at the pledge, provide comments back to Dr. Bernard Franklin at the NSA National Office so that they can be considered as the Board of Governors and the Board of Directors take up this issue again in their August meeting. The Division I Board of Directors also received a report on new requirements adopted by the Board of Governors that are applicable to sites hosting NCAA championship and other events. The purpose of these requirements are to make sure that all NCAA events provide a safe, healthy, and inclusive environment free from discrimination for our student athletes, our fans, and the public. Criteria is being established and will be circulated to all host events in the near future. Now let's hear a report from our General Counsel, Scott Beerby. Good morning, I'm Scott Beerby, General Counsel with the NCAA. I wanted to provide a, a couple of updates to you on the legal front. Uh, first, you may have been following the NCAA's filings in the O'Bannon case. We have uh, sought review to the U.S. Supreme Court 
to challenge the antitrust violation finding uh, that the Ninth Circuit and District Court out in California had found against the NCAA. Our filings now will be reviewed by the U.S. Supreme Court for determination about whether they will accept the case. Uh, the Supreme Court, as you know, takes very few uh, cases for review, but we should know by September whether that case will go for argument before the U.S. Supreme Court. The other uh, subject area that I wanted to provide an update about uh, is on the concussion front. Uh, you know that for the last year, the NCAA has been seeking approval of a settlement uh, that would resolve uh, um, medical monitoring uh, or medical diagnostic claims by former student athletes who claim to have ongoing injuries from concussion. Uh, the Arrington case, as some of you may know it, um, now is teed up for uh, preliminary approval, we hope, later this summer. Um, that will mean then that um, we will go through one last uh, court review uh, where those opposed to the settlement can file objections. Um, but we remain optimistic that that aspect of the concussion cases will be resolved. And as a reminder, that will cover um, all three divisions, all sports for concussion-related injuries. Um, there have been uh, some bodily injury damages cases recently filed uh, against the NCAA institutions and conferences that those have been in the news over the last couple of weeks. Those are separate from uh, what we are trying to do in Arrington to resolve uh, the medical diagnostic access of, for former student athletes. The bodily injury cases are really uh, those that uh, are inappropriate for us to look at on a group basis, um, but rather um, fall more on the lines of how injuries occur, what um, medical treatment was provided, when they return to play, very factually specific cases that shouldn't be decided on a class-wide basis. So um, those are going to remain pending for quite some time, and we will keep you posted on developments in those cases. Thank you. Finally, here's an overview of the upcoming council meeting. In addition to hearing the reports from its seven committees, the Council will spend time in strategic discussions around the following topics. Issues related to the student-athlete experience and in particular time demands as feedback is coming in from the conference offices as well as the autonomy conferences proposals related to time demands. The Council will spend a good portion of its meeting addressing all of these issues related to time demands, as well as the feedback received from the membership. The Council will also engage in a discussion surrounding the two-year review of the Division I governance structure. An ad hoc committee has been hard at work in generating ideas that will be discussed by the full Council. In addition, the Council will discuss the best means possible to manage the volume of activity currently existing within the Division I structure, as well as addressing challenges to the Council's workload itself. The Council will also engage in its conversation regarding the Value-Based Revenue Distribution Working Group, which we discussed earlier in the Board's report. I want to thank you for your attention to this video and I hope you have found it instructive, not only in reflecting on what has occurred over the last several months at the board level, at the governor's level, and the council level, but also what lies ahead. As the academic year has come to a close, I hope the summer provides you with an opportunity to refresh, recharge your batteries, and I know certainly to plan ahead for the 2016-17 academic year. And for the council members, I look forward to seeing you later this month. Thanks for your time and attention.